Hello everyone. This video today will hopefully help you demystify how to use Illuminate as a secure testing platform now that we're in this online world. It actually can be a pretty effective secure platform if you know how to use it. One of the reasons that I think people don't use it very often is it seems very intimidating. There's so many different options and so many different buttons, but that's because it has so many redundancies. There are about 15 ways to do everything in Illuminate. So I'm going to focus on the easiest ways to find what you need and create an assessment. So first thing, when you open it up, you're going to see all of these icons. This is going to contain almost everything you need. There's all kinds of other functions within Illuminate, but you know, let's just keep it simple. If you scroll down to the part where it says create an assessment, that's what you're going to click on first. You click on that and you're going to be clicking on flexible assessment because you're going to be creating an answer key and a PDF for a paper or online administration. This is if you want to use a test that you've already created. You can create item bank tests, but it's a little harder. This is a handy dandy way. If you've already got a test, you just need an online way to administer it. This is it. So once you've done that, you're going to create a, a title. This happens to be a retake for my for me. So so to kill a mockingbird. Whoops, it's part one. I'm sure there'll be a part two. One retake. Create it. Then once you've created it, you're going to tell it how many multiple choice questions, or you've got multiple types. You could do multiple choice, multiple choice partial credit, constructed response, explicit constructed response, you know, all kinds of different ideas. Um, but in this case, I know that I have, I'm pretty sure, 25 multiple choice, not 125, 25 multiple choice. And then I have uh, three... I guess they'd all be constructive responses because even though they are, some of them are shorter and some of them are longer, I have three short answer and two paragraphs. So I'm going to make five constructive response questions. Not six, five. And then I'm going to add. If for some reason you can't remember how many you, you have or you don't have it open, that's totally fine. You don't need to have it open. Okay, you can always come back and add questions as you go. So it's going to immediately add all of your question answer choices. So the next thing I need to do is update, um, excuse me, upload my materials, the test itself. So I go to the test, I click open my files, and I'll move it up a little bit so I can drag it. It is, uh, there we go, this is the one that I need. I drop it right in there, it uploads, it's ready to go, it's in place, and it's, it's the, so now we have the test itself, the material for the test itself. For the standards, um, if you go in here, you're gonna add your standards. So if you go to providers, if you scroll all the way to the very bottom, you've got Georgia and standards of excellence, if you click on that, Subjects, for me it's English language arts, chose your subject, grade level, pick whatever grade level you are. For me, this is a 910. And then it will have then you just need to click on the ones that you think you're going to use. I will tell you, you can get into the nitty-gritty of dialing into the small details of the standards, or you can just pick like the big overall standards, like key ideas, ideas and details or cite their own evidence, whatever. So you don't have to get to the nitty gritty. You can do the sort of the big picture standards if you'd like. Now, it just so happens my first group of questions is matching. So I'm gonna need to add more answer choices. And in fact, I'm gonna have to make it a custom one. So it, if I go to the drop down, it'll give me all of these choices. Well, that's really not what I need. I need something else. So I'm gonna edit the choices. And I'm going to add a choice of A, B, C, D. Those 
The one bit of bad news is it only gives you nine spaces. So I'm going to sort of fudge it a little bit so that some of my answers don't include A, some of my answers don't include K, um, but it's all going to work out just fine. So I will have added that one now. And it will give me an opportunity then to use that, the one that I've added. So I click check to add that group. And that's the one I'm going to choose. So now it gives me the options of the one the A through I. Now, like I said, because of the way my test is set up, it is, I'm going to need more answer choices than that. So um, this next one, I'm going to just make it, again, edit my choices. This time I'm not going to include A so that I can get my 10th choice in there. And then I can kind of alternate between those two, making sure that I have included the right answer for the right thing. Oh, actually, I'm not including A this time. And check. And I've saved that. So now I've got the option of that one that doesn't include A. And I'm going to go through and do the same thing for 1 through 10. Just kind of alternating. I just have to make sure that I do end up with the one that's not that choice somewhere along the way. But you get the idea. You can also eliminate answer choices if you want to. Okay. Then over here is where I can add my standards. So if I click on the standard, um, I'm, I've, I've already got the drop down of what I want to do. This one all, is all key ideas and details. So same thing, I can just keep adding key ideas and details. Or if I've changed standards, I can add other ideas, et cetera, et cetera. So you keep, then you keep going down, and eventually you're going to need to create the key for it. Then over here, I've come to my first short answer. So my first two are really just, sh my first three are really just short things. They, they really don't count more than any multiple choice. So I'm going to leave those at one. But my last two constructive responses are longer. So I want to give them more credit. So I'm going to make that all the way up to, um, I'll call that maybe four points. So that way I can grade it as a one, two, three, or four. Same thing, and I'm going to add my standards. So for right now, I'm not going to create the key. I'm going to go ahead and save it and show you how it, go, it is going forward. So I'll come back and create the key. But if I click Done, it'll tell me my assessment is ready. But I can go back and edit it at any time. Um, but just so you can preview it, In order to preview it, if you click on edit, then you can click this little preview button. And it will let you see what the test is going to look like. So there's the test. And you can scroll through. And over here is the answer key. So it kind of becomes like an online Scantron. Okay which is quite handy. And I'm, it's telling me I'm finishing the test because this is just a preview. Okay. So now the test is ready to go. You're ready to add administration. I'm going to show you how you can do that. Again, there's so many redundancies. There's ways that you could do that. But you can click, to me, I always just click Add Administration. You can also click Test and Portal. But I click Add Administration. Then I've got all my testing options. This is actually super handy because there are so many different options that you can use. You can choose when the testing window starts. 
I would always keep all academic level years and all grade levels going. Then you can pick your sections or you can pick selected students. This is very handy when you've got kids with extended time because in the administration settings, you can actually put a time duration in there. So you can say time of day window, but you could put a time duration, say you want the whole test to only take 45 minutes, you can put it in there. Um, I put no more than one pause and then online entry, and then I usually create a password. Um, in this case, I'll make it Scout, since we're talking about To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, if you have everybody on school devices, you can use locked browser only, but I don't think that's really the case right now, so I wouldn't bother with that. But if you do have a case where everybody has the um, school devices, then locked browser only will make the kids be locked into the black browser. Online testing tool settings, you can enable or disable a bunch of different tools. I mostly leave these kind of according to the item setting, but occasionally I'll enable highlighting or maybe the dictionary. And then assessment review settings. This is important. You always want this to be checked no. And then I actually put the enabled on and make it like a month from now. So when I want the kids to be able to go back and see their answers, I can come back and change this setting, okay? Um, so that's how you would do it. Once you've done that, you can click save to have the, to have the um, administration set and you are ready, the kids are ready to take the test. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when the kids are taking the test. So if you have students taking the test, you'll see this live proctoring thing come up. If you click on live proctoring, and notice I have on To Kill a Mockingbird, this is the original test they had, I had six students testing, and then I had 62 students testing. Those six students were my extended time kids, so I was able to give them longer to take the test. These were my non-extended time kids. If I click on live proctoring, I can actually watch the kids taking the test in real time. Um, and it will show me what they're getting right, what they're getting wrong, the percentile of, like, if there's a question that I need to throw out, that will show. The live proctoring fu um, function is really, really cool. It's helpful to just kind of see, do I have, especially right now when we're online, it's very hard to tell, are kids progressing? Are they taking the test? This will show you exactly whether they are or are not. Then, the other thing that is when you're ready to get the grades, you need to click on assessment matrix report. In this part, you can filter by student, filter by classes, um, select the assessment you want to see. I'll, and um, just for, for privacy sake, I'm not going to show different students, but you can filter the different things and it's going to give you a chart which shows you exactly what percent they got right or wrong. Where, what they were wrong, where they were wrong, what they, what they did right, and you'll be able to really dial down into that data. There's other bits of data you can also dial down into, but again, that's a little bit more advanced. I just wanted to give you the hint of how to start it up, how to get a test going, and how to review that data overall in the beginning. I'll give you some more information, more videos on how to do more with Illuminate on another date. Good luck. Email Robin Butler, if you have any questions.